Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy. Hope you can guess what this one's about. Yeah, I got a few faulty Sony PlayStation 1s. Yeah, there the are millions of these about. They're not all going to work. The PlayStation itself was developed by Sony, obviously, and released initially in Japan on the 3rd of December 94. Reached us here in Europe in September 95 and it was developed because well Nintendo fell out with Sony and uh, kind of did the dirty but go look it up on uh, YouTube there are plenty of videos out there telling you exactly what happened. So at launch the PlayStation received a claim and in less than a decade became the first entertainment system that the console type idea to ship over a hundred million units. That's just ridiculous. Its use of compact discs instead of cartridges heralded the change as well because it was a cheaper format to produce, it was quicker to produce, you know, for effectively the same return on investment. The PlayStation 1 in this form was released on the 7th of July 2000. It's smaller, it was redesigned, it, obviously it was cost cut and all the rest of it. And it was the highest selling console through the end of that year, outselling everything else. A total of 28 million units of these were produced by the time it was discontinued in March 2006. Now, why is this still desirable? Well, there were a total of over 4,200 games produced worldwide for this. Yeah, I think you'll find something for all your tastes. So these don't work. These ones here are part of my own collection that I had. This one seems to work fine, except the graphics are corrupt. This one button sticks, the eject button, plus the drive makes a nasty screech noise. It does initially read discs, it makes a nasty clicky screech noise and then that's it, it stops reading discs. And these ones I purchased from eBay off a brilliant seller called Jurassic Varge. I'll put uh, their details down in the description. and. It cost me £25 for the three and they're already kind of pre-diagnosed so not reading discs, loud noise, disc not uh, spinning. Hmm, got another one with a loud noise. Uh, faulty power button. I can confirm the power button clicks but the minute you let go it goes off. So there's a problem with this. And then this one is an AV issue sometimes flickers um, so yeah I've got uh, a number of different issues I don't think I'm going to be able to fix them all but I'm hoping that the AV issues should be fixable the power button well again if I've got one that's got a dead CD drive maybe I can get the power button off of this swap it over get a working system This one, uh, sorry, this one I believe I can get working. Fix that button, 
um, fix the AV issue. These two I'm not so sure about. We'll see. We'll see if we can do something. You can buy replacement lasers still. The problem is the cost of the lasers these days. Is it worth doing to fix something like a PlayStation 1? We'll see. We'll see. Now I'm going to do the same initial to each of these because the PlayStation 1 does have an issue with the, uh, the capacitors, funnily enough. So let me move these out of the way and bring in our circuit diagram. I'm going to turn this this way so that it lines up with how we would have it. So you've got your output ports and the power at the back. And we're going to focus around a couple of specific capacitors. These capacitors here all deal with the output and I believe it's this one tends to be the one that causes problems. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of these. I'm taking all three of them out of the loop. Now, this diagram on the file that I got also comes with your listing. So you're able to look up and see that C550, C550 is 22 UF, 4 volts. So using this, I was then or able to order the capacitors in advance. And the nice thing is, these are one of the easiest systems to get into. So let's get one of these cracked open. There are six screws that we need to worry about. One, two, three, four, five, and hidden under here. And this is your warranty seal, so I hate to tell you, you are going to break the warranty if you take this apart. But let's crack it open. Now what I did there was to use some isopropyl alcohol and a blade to get underneath it and I was able to actually slowly cut it along. Now it's not perfect, but you know what? If I'm adding this one to my collection, it's nice to have one that still has a warranty seal. So let's pop this open. That's it. It's open. Your drive, you've got two connectors, I believe. One and two. And this one can go to the side. There's the board. Very simple. One main circuit board. And that's it out. This can go to the side. It will need a bit of a clean. And here we are. So if we bring out a diagram, we're talking these ones here or the placement and I believe, I could be wrong, I believe it's that one that normally causes the issue. So let's get that replaced. With that done, we'll pop this to the side and we'll give the CD drive a quick clean. 
Now you can see this has taken a little bit of damage. Two of the points are missing. But as long as the balls are there we should be fine. It's moving smooth enough. So I will clean the laser in a minute. But first I'm going to flip it over see if we can see the runners that the motor sits on. They are well hidden. So there's a couple of screws. Let's see if we can get this grey cover off. So that's a bit of a pain to remove. You've got to unhook here, unhook here after the screws are done. And if you lift it up from this side, you can kind of pivot it and then lift it up and over because this slides right underneath between the mechanisms. However with that out of the way you can see all of the gears and the mechanism here. It all looks fine. I'm wondering if I can lift that and slide everything about and we'll look at redoing all of the white lithium grease here so that it'll run a bit smoother again. So I'm sure this was a working mechanism and just turning this you get a click and I can see there is a missing tooth on one of the gears which is not great and that missing tooth is right here. This is proving quite difficult to get out it doesn't want to come out at all but yeah having a missing tooth on a gear that's always going to cause a drive issue. So I need to check all of these gears on all of the drives and see what I can recover. I don't think these are available, but we can check. Okay, so I've greased all this up, but I can't get past the broken tooth on that gear. So here's the next system we're going to look at. We'll just call this number two. And yeah, something loose is inside. It does have a faulty power button and it suddenly dawned on me that I haven't actually taken any video of the faults. So I'll record the faults separately and just add them in here so that you can see exactly what's going on. This one has a faulty power button. So sorry about the noise in the background, we've got the washing machine going. However, this is the second system, which is marked as a problem with the power button. And that seems to be reading the disc absolutely fine. So it says there's an issue with the power button. And you have to hold it down, and certainly when I tested it prior, did have an issue with the power button. However, it currently seems to be fine. I'm still going to strip out that power button and we'll give it uh, a once over and see what we can do just to make sure it doesn't recur. Now, the power button on these is held down with two clips either side. So let's see if we can pop this cap off and that way we can get some deoxid properly inside. With that done, let's get these capacitors off and replaced.
So this particular unit seems to be working fine. It's all been cleaned and re-greased. The bits rattling around were actually these. Now, you can replace this. You can pry it up, get a replacement, drop it on, away you go. You know what? It seems to work without it. Yes, it's good extra stabilization, but as long as the balls are working and clipping and holding the CD, I'm not too worried, so I'm just going to run like this. So we'll get rid of these and let's do the final assembly on this. So this is the third system we're going to look at. It's marked as AV issue sometimes flickers. Again, it looks nice and clear. And again, it seems fine. Seems fine at the moment. that one done let's move on to number four and this is machine number four certainly not the happiest thing in the world is it I don't think I'd be able to play that I mean don't get me wrong it's nice and clear but I don't think it's quite meant to scroll And this is the final machine we'll look at. It's marked not reading discs, loud noise, disc not spinning. Well, I can hear the disc spinning. Ooh. Yeah, something's not right at all there. You could hear it spinning up, but it was making a horrible noise. So that one's definitely not alive. Nothing's damaged the disc. As you can see, it's absolutely pristine. So we'll lock that away. And we will keep G police for later. And this is the final machine we'll look at. It's marked not reading discs, loud noise, disc not spinning. Well, I can hear the disc spinning. Ooh. Yeah, something's not right at all there. You could hear it spinning up, but it was making a horrible noise. So that one's definitely not alive. Nothing's damaged the disc. As you can see, it's absolutely pristine. So we'll lock that away. And we'll keep 
G police for later. So if this one's not reading discs, loud noise, etc. And sticky button. So let's sort all that. So we have a problem, that shouldn't move freely. Unfortunately this mechanism and possibly this gear has failed. So I need to get all of this off to find out what's going on because it should not float about freely like that. Maybe the spring's in the wrong way because it doesn't seem to want to push back. But whatever the issue is, I need to find out. So I'm going to have to be quite brutal. And I know I couldn't get that off. Oh, okay. That one's just fallen out. Well, there we go. Let's see what we find. So the spring has failed. It's it's twisted and it's not putting pressure on. I'm going to have to clean the gears up and let's see what we find when we do that. So the main gear has sustained a small piece of damage. You may be able to see it just stuck on the tweezers there. And that's the top off of one of the teeth. So my issue is while I might be able to straighten this I can't fix that gear. So at the moment this is dead which is unfortunate because it was a, an NTSC console. So let's pop this to the side with the other one that's currently not working we've got three that we can test and see what happens. So here are the three that are ready to go. Unfortunately, number one, we've got a damaged laser, as is number five. So these ones will simply pop to the side until I can hopefully get some gears to sort those because I believe the laser modules themselves are fine, it's just those gears. So let's have a look. This is number two. Does everything it should. So let's get a disc. Power this on and see what happens. So this one was listed as faulty power button. Drive is nice and quiet. Picture is very clear. Drive is nice and quiet. So, big tick in the box. That one's running fine. So let's move on to the next. So our next one was marked AV issue, sometimes flickers. Excellent, so let's move on to the third of the hopefully working systems. And this is the final one to check. Lovely, excellent. So there we have it. Three working systems here, unfortunately two that I'm going to need to look at, see if we can get those uh, gears. Unfortunately, the alternative is replacement complete laser modules, which to be honest, seems a bit daft for what is nothing more than a tiny gear, but we'll see what we can do. 
So thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next Retro Crazy. Thank you.